nowadays people love seeing stuff yeah, more than absolutely. just hearing it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if they can see it and hear it, you, you won their hearts 100%. So I think like, it's, um, it's a benefit to the creative or whoever's putting yeah. the video out. People need to see that what your vision is for the song. Even if it's a visualizer, like what yeah. characters are in the visualizer. It's like a visual what, aid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it gives, it gives the, the audience like an idea it's of like, this person's yeah. this kind of person sort of thing. Love you know that. what I mean? Yeah. Love it's, that. Like, it's like, you know how when you watch a movie the first time you don't get it, but like when you watch it again, you get it again, mm. just from the context and stuff. So it's like when you hear the song without the music video, yeah, you don't really understand the full picture. But when you see the video, you get the full yeah, picture. Yeah, Debbie does Dallas. Yeah. The third time was an absolute insane <laughs> fucking. Like, it made more sense. <laughs> Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have yet another musician on the show. Uh, the show's uh, kind of steering towards that way, but I kind of like it because, uh, you know, music is uh, one of my favorite art forms. And uh, with Bright Tank supporting the uh, whole thing, which I love. We've got the beers, we've got the music, and now we've got the talent behind the music. Baby Blue, what's, what's going good, on? What's good, what's good, what's good? How you doing? Good, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. That's an honor, my man. Yeah, so um, the introduction. Uh, tell the audience, tell the viewers, what uh, what's your vibe? Like, how did you get into the whole... Where did you spawn how, in? Let's how, start with how that. How did I get into yeah. music? So, um, okay, so my name is Baby Blue, so I'm originally from Sri Lanka, and I moved to Australia about, like, nine, nine ten years ago. Um, but I was always around music, so like I grew up in a musical family. My dad's a musician. Um, he's actually like a professor in a music institute. Um, so like, yeah, if you if you have like a, a PhD in yeah, music, yeah, yeah, PhD, what? everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he teaches at this um, institute called um, SAE School of Audio Engineering. Um, so like throughout the years of growing up, I always seen my dad play music and be part of bands and this and that, commercials, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I've always picked up like the guitar. Guitar was kind of like my thing. Um, I started off with the guitar and I joined the choir. Um, school bands and stuff like that but I never really got to the point where I started writing my own stuff I just loved music like playing uh, playing music and stuff um, but I was heavily into like the church kind of worship music and stuff that was like the, the only gospel music. stuff yeah the gospel yeah. stuff I was never I never listened to Drake never listened to Nicki like none of that stuff it was just straight gospel and then just like about what eight years ago I got into hip-hop I like yeah like my the first artist I ever listened to was actually my older brother because he got into hip-hop and then um, I heard his name going around and stuff and then tapped into hip hop and then started listening to Drake and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, damn, this is something like completely missed out on. And I was like, let me tap into this. Um, so just only like a year ago, I kind of tapped into writing my own music and getting my own songs out and stuff like that. But like I've always been around it. It's always been like an influence to me. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like my quick footstep in into music, man. I love yeah. it. I love it. Thank you. So just, just something just came to me. Yeah. Yeah. Gospel hop. Thoughts? Gospel hop. Look, I mean, they they do it. Um, there's a couple guys like Lecrae, um, Andy Minio. Um, there's like there, there's a label called Reach Records. There's a lot of them up there. Um, they've been doing it for years. I used to listen to some of them actually back in the day. Um, look, honestly, like it's a thing, but like I don't think you can ever mix like religion and hip hop like that. <laughs> like personal personal Fair opinion. Enough. Um, just because like it would throw away a lot of like you know morals and stuff like that. But hey. It eats to their own. If, if they make it work, they make it work. Yeah. But like, if it doesn't work, don't push it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, Gospel Hop, it's been there. It's been there. And like, it's doing its thing. Honestly, it's still nice. doing its thing. Yeah. So uh, you're telling me about that you just got into writing music a year yeah. ago. Yeah. Uh, what, what sort of uh, lyrics uh, can we expect? What do you write about? So mainly for myself um, or the music I kind of make, I write about love. I like, write about honesty and I write about like the members that I have around, like my dogs and my family and stuff like that. Um, that kind of many dogs you have? Uh, dogs, uh, dogs in this. <laughs> so okay, quick, quick, quick breakdown. Dogs. I I refer dogs as like my homies, okay. um, but it's not D O G. It's D A W G. Um, so don't get that twisted. Uh, but no. So me and my dogs, like we like <laughs> <laughs> we make music and stuff together quite a bit. Um, so like they they influence me quite a bit. My family influences me a lot. Um, and I would say, like, my own, like, experiences, like, love, honesty, the things I go through every day, it's just, like, what inspires me. But I'm more into the R&B stuff, so I wouldn't really say I'm more of, like, a rap rapper, mm -hmm. in a sense. But, like, I tap into those, like, tap into that kind of thing. But I'm more into R&B, and I'm more into this kind of singing stuff, yeah. um, if you want to put it in that way. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So uh, I'll ask the question again. How many dogs do you have? I've got I've got eleven dogs. Right, eleven dogs. But I grew eleven. Up with, I love yeah. that you know the number. Yeah, yeah. I got I got eleven dogs, but I actually grew up with seven dogs back home. Um, like all types of dogs. It was like my thing. So I love dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just loyal. So, so how how uh, how how do I get into your pack? How how am I? How do you go? Yeah, it's you're very one of the simple. Dogs. It's very simple. You you kind of already in the pack. Mm. That's the thing. Like the moment I met you, you were in the pack. So so basically, yep. all you have to do to get in the pack is just be yourself. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just be true and be honest, and that's you. You in. Um, and then we we move together. Oh, Rex going to come in. It's probably worth talking about the Melbourne trip a little bit. Yeah, I mean, no, like, you guys sure. you guys built a little bit of a bond over there. We did, we did. That was that was actually a vibey trip. Yeah. That was shout a out to our uh, Sev sister for actually showing up to one of the shows. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, uh, you, you heard the voice of uh, Rax Shakur in yes, the background that's, there. That's the big dog. Uh, to Rack Shakur. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll get to the Melbourne trip in yeah, a bit. Yeah. Um, I've got the whole line of questions, but cheers. Shout out to <laughs> Rack. Um, it's my show. So, <laughs> so you're talking about um, getting into the pack and being yourself. Yeah, um, yeah. What are your key traits to identify someone as being real? Wow. Um, I would say just the way they move, man. It's like if you if you see like you're, you're with a group of people, like you're all trying to do the same thing and you help each other, then that to me is like shows your, your true worth, your true value. Like you actually care. You want to do something for yourself and other people too. But if you're in a group full of people and you're just doing things for yourself and not leaving anyone in the loop and not caring too much, then that kind of shows me you're just for yourself. Um, so that kind of puts you out of the pack in a sense. Um, but yeah, no, like just – normal actions like I, like the way the way i kind of met rack or the way i kind of met you you guys have just been yourself and i was like damn i would i would love to hang around like <laughs> you a lot more i'd love to hang around right so that just brought you guys in the pack then i brought myself i guess in your pack as well but like yeah you know um it's just your actions and how you are as a person yeah that's it that's very it. simple and over time you you create these walls or these mm -hmm. boxes that someone has to tick through you know unfortunate uh, disconnects and yeah, yeah. and and out of pack outcasts and uh, see you later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the the time that we went to Melbourne yeah, um, yeah. last month uh, was uh, for Gabs. Was lit. Great Australian Beer mm -hmm. Summit. Yeah, Spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always get that wrong. And um, yeah, it was a, it was a, a real cool trip because it, it was like was. a boys trip that I was well overdue yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, facts, facts. And because uh, I hadn't been involved in it's sport. It's kind of my first boys trip, actually. Ooh. First, yeah, first. I've actually never done something like that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for everybody that doesn't know, we went to Melbourne and we did a whole tour with Bright Tank Brewery mm -hmm. and uh, we had some hip-hop artists involved, including Baby Blue. And uh, we uh, capped the, the weekend off with a lot of beer tasting yeah, yeah. <laughs> and selling and spruiking and it was a whole lot of fun. Um, but yeah, well, going back to that trip, um, what did you learn from it? Wow. Um, what did I learn from the trip overall? Man, it's just like building, again, building connections, mm. um, embracing a whole new city. Uh, like I've always loved to go to Melbourne and Sydney, so it was really good to go to Melbourne. Um, so just embracing the city, just seeing how the city is in general, how they move, like ways to get in into the city, like say into music and stuff like that, or if you're into media and stuff, how to, the ways to get into mm. there and tap into there as well. And also, like, man, um, biggest thing is, like, the bonding I had with everyone in the trip, man. Like, that was, like, the biggest thing for me, just to see everyone from the city going into one little sprint event and just go do things every day in and out. Like, it was just fun. Like, we all vibed with each other. We all got to learn something from each other. So that was, like, kind of my main thing from the trip. Yeah. And we brought that back here. So, like, every time we see each other out right now, it's all love. It's all, like, let's dap this. Let's do this video. Let's do that. Like, you want to hop on this? So it's just, it's amazing when you do something that small and then it, it like spreads out bigger, you know? So for me, that was like my big thing for the trip. Yeah. Yeah. You have history, you have yeah. that uh, nostalgic presence amongst each other. Or like if you ever just see them like after a couple months, you're like, oh damn, like that's mm. my guy. You go up to him, you know? Yeah. So like, so it's just stuff like that. You're like, wow, you just build that relationship. You won't ever like yeah. burn down. or. Well, I, I noticed that as well uh, last Tuesday at the, the bus down. Yeah. With the, um, yes, yeah. with the cars. Mm -hmm. I was like, I knew you were there. Yeah. I, just I saw you at the entrance. I was like, oh, Sebs, I'm going straight. Yeah, man, I literally just went straight and dapped him up. I was like, yeah. That was surreal, <laughs> man. It felt like, uh, it's like, it's like, uh, this is a weird comparison, but yeah, bear yeah, with yeah. me. Uh, it's like my wife's been drinking uh, all night uh, after work and she's at a work party and she's like, Seb, what are you coming over? What yeah, are you yeah, 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 yeah. I got, get there and she's just like, like vibing <laughs> and she sees me. She's just like, fuck. That's yeah, yeah, facts. Literally, no, facts. It was that because, like, I was literally taking photos and then, like, I seen this tall figure at the entrance. I'm like, Seb, 
cool, go quick. So yeah. what's, what's good, bro? How you? Literally, so that, that like, yeah. just stuff like that, and man. Then, like, and then you I'll win, drop everything just thing? to go. Yeah, literally. That, that, that respect there, it's like, that's the pack. That was, that was the moment. You know? And that's then where, I did yeah. my thing and you did your thing. If we wanted to connect again, mm -hmm. it was just like, we're doing our thing. We don't need to hold hands the whole time. And literally, you know? literally. We give each other space, but we, we, we know we're there. And 100%. if someone comes in and goes, oh, you're talking about music, man, you have to meet Baby Blue. Hundred percent. Whatever the fuck I'm doing. Oh, like, I don't oh, even do, know. like, do you want to do you want a video in the car, or do you do you want to do you want to blow up your Instagram or TikTok? You know, like, in, yeah, or like an yo, interview. Yeah, yeah, you know. So hundred percent. So like, even because I knew, I see the thing is like, I knew about you before the trip, and like I knew, like I knew, like rack meeting you and stuff. But I always wanted to meet you. That was like Flex. one thing, and I was just like, what would I say to this guy if I actually <laughs> met him? But then when I met you, you were just welcoming. So like I didn't have to actually like because you know how you meet some guys you just you got to think of what you want to ask them or how you're gonna approach yeah, yeah. but you were just welcoming so I was just like oh shit yeah, oh, let's thanks, do this man. like you know so we just grew that relationship mm. from there but yeah no hundred percent there's something uh, my mom taught me uh, uh, years back she said that anyone approaches you and they'll they'll either want something from you yeah. or they have something that you can you, you know benefit from hundred percent so always be interested in them. No matter what. Facts. And I'm always interested in everyone because I see everyone as a business opportunity, whether it's me helping them or mm -hmm. they're helping me or mm -hmm. the rare case more so now yeah. is it's a mutual thing. And that's, 100%, 100%. And that's the pack. Yeah. Right? Facts. I think that's the theme of the podcast. Uh, building your own pack. 100%. Dogs. There, we go. there you go. There we go. So um, going back to your own music, um, you've been writing for a year. You're in the Perth scene. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself kind of moving from here? Um, do you do you see yourself in somewhere like LA, moving to Melbourne? Um, yeah, no, definitely. I would see myself like visiting there a lot. Um, but honestly, this is my city. I love this city. Um, this city is kind of what made Baby Blue in an instance. Um, so I can't take that away and just be like, nah. But no, I would stay here for sure, man. There's a lot the city can grow into and there's a lot the city can do in a sense. So I'll definitely go visit like LA. I would love to visit Atlanta, Melbourne, Sydney. Um, there's a couple spots um, I could take my music to definitely, but place to grow it. Toronto, yeah, Toronto, Toronto. Canada, e e like everywhere, everywhere. But like, honestly, like I would I would stay here and do it because like this is, it's a gold mine here, bro. Mm -hmm. Like once once it gets popped off here, like that's it. We're about to take over a lot of industries. We're about to take a, lo a lot of TV screens. That's that's for sure. So like, no, nah, I would stay here, man, for sure. This, it's this an exciting city. time for yeah. Perth. And like, Perth was still slept on. 100%. You know? 100%. It's it's so diverse. Um, Like whether you want to be a painter, a writer, like you, you want to go dance. Like it's so diverse in all those like industries. It's like, we just not looked into like that mm. much. But if we were... Yeah, it's an end game for Melbourne and Sydney, 100%. I'll back that. It's an end game for Melbourne and Sydney. If, I if everything here was looked into, I know I'm looking at my manager right now, but if I, <laughs> uh, but if if we were looked into seriously and if we had a, we had a, we had like the backings that we needed, yeah, 100%. We'll take over 100%. quite a bit. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. But we got people like you as well in the influencing side. So if we got more people like that, 100%, we're taking over everything. Yeah. So yeah, no, for sure. Whatever we can do to help. Uh, and that's, and that's the big synergy that people need to realize is, you can't do it all yourself. Yeah. You need a manager. You need someone to do the groundwork. You need to do the hustle. And then you need someone else to come in and go, hey, I will not blow you up, but yeah. but but yeah. help talk with you um, uh, or just spread the word uh, any way you can. Thanks. Thanks. Um, but Thanks. then obviously, uh, you know, like for me, it's like I just cool to be involved in the hip hop mm -hmm. scene that I thought I'd never be involved in. My ultimate aim for this podcast in Perth yeah. is for anybody that comes in to Perth, yeah. whether they're an artist, a celebrity or whatever, yeah. to come and do their gig, mm -hmm. come to one of Rack's fuck off after parties yeah. and yeah. come on the Sevo show. 100%. In I'm no particular order. You know, that, yeah, facts, that would be facts. fucking sick. I'm with it. I'm with it. That would no, be that sick. That would be sick. Yeah. That actually would be sick. And like the interviews that I kind of do is it's not like uh, the, the the generic yeah, media facts, shit. Facts. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like tell me some – like I, I'm trying to be completely oblivious yeah. and – not go through the same like typical questions like okay, yeah, yeah, yeah how like where did you grow up and stuff and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know like uh, let's say Kendrick was there yeah like okay, dream yeah, interview yeah, yeah I mean most he would have got that question a thousand times hundred percent hundred percent find a question in that in his yeah. response 
something that he would have never been asked before and that, that's like Just what I love that yeah, yeah no, man. 100%, I like yeah, that. Man. I, I, that that's why I'm sitting here I'm like I'm a bit nervous I'm not nervous <laughs> but no it's cool it's actually cool this is fun this that's is it, that's <laughs> it. So you've been, have you done many podcasts before? I've actually only done one man apart from this I've only done one and that was like a year ago um, that was like my debut into like music so hey. I, that was with um Jacob the Roadshow podcast oh yes yeah so um, I did one with him and then um, after that, like, we did a couple of radio interviews. But other than that, nah, like, I love this. This is actually sick. I, I can do with this a lot more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So um, who would be your dream feature wow. in one of your songs? Wow. I've got a couple, man, because um, I look up to quite a few guys. Um, so my top, my top, and you can fight me for this, is Drizzy. Drizzy? Drizzy is, like, my main guy. Um, definitely, because I take huge influence from him. Mm -hmm. um, just over the years, he's done music and he's been an image of like a rapper, an artist or like how to do it. Um, so I take a lot from him. Yep. Um, so he would be my number one. And then I would definitely say like, damn, this, okay, can I go three? Can I yeah, go three? Yeah, yeah, okay, go okay three. we'll go three. We'll just go three. Uh, we'll go Drizzy. Yeah. Black. Um, and then I would say, I honestly put like Young Thug in there. Um, I don't know how to make that work, but I'll put Young Thug in there because he's just so inspirational. He's just the guy. What yeah. makes what makes uh, Young Thug so inspirational to you? Man, it's just the influence he's had overall in like hip hop. Um, just when he started out, the way like he brought his whole team involved and like his family involved and his like neighborhood, city, everything, like everywhere he moved or everything he did, like he never let anyone let loose. You know, he's always that guy that's been you you like if you see interviews about like Thugger. Everyone respects him because he's always done something, whether it's something big or small. He's always been that guy, you know, that's just out there, helpful, like this and that, caring. He may not be a nice guy overall. I don't know. I've never met the guy. But like, yeah, no, I, I just seen like the influence he's had over like individual artists, over the hip hop scene in general. And like, he's very inspirational, man. And RIP, I mean, not RIP, Free Gunner, sorry. I mean, Free Thugger. Free Thugger. Free Thugger. Free Thugger. Free Thugger. Free Thugger. He's, he's paved the blueprint, hasn't he? Huh? Paved the blueprint. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. He's uh he's paved the blueprint for a lot of like Atlanta rappers that come on that same sound, definitely. So you had the late um Lil Kid, mm. um, you have Lil Got It, you've also got someone like Gunner at the moment, you've got um quite a few guys, man. You've got like uh, like uh, uh, yeah, like yeah, little, little baby, baby and stuff. Like even little little baby didn't want to really rap. Yeah. It was like Thugger that went up to him and was like, "Yo, bro, get into the studio and start rapping." Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, a lot of rappers like that. Like he's done a lot of stuff for like Twenty One, Drake, and all them guys too. So it's like, yeah, uh, even though they're all big names, he's tapped into a lot of local guys as well. So I gotta give him his respect for that. Like again, I'm very new to like the whole industry of like rap and hip hop, but just seeing over the years that what I've learned and what I've yeah. seen, it's like, he's been a big inspiration to a lot of guys. So he's also inspired me with music and stuff too. So yeah, definitely he would, they, those three would be my top three. I yeah, love, it, love it. You mentioned all these different rap names. Let's yeah. go back to your rap name. Yeah. How Baby does, Blue. how does that come about? Sweet. So Baby Blue came around. So Blue has always been there. So um, when I first kind of started, like I said, so my brother was like the very first artist I've ever listened to, right? Yeah. So when he was going around, um, he was going on his like older name he, before he went on to Figaro Jones. So most of you that don't know my older brother is Figaro Jones. Um, he right now resides in Sydney, Australia, um, but he used to be here. So he, he started off his journey here and he made most of his like impacts in the city. Um, and then while he was doing that, so we're going way back. So when he was in his first name, I started to get to know him and stuff. Like heard his name going around the city and stuff. And I was like, oh, what? what? He makes music all right cool like let me tap in I was like, all right cool tapped in and i listened to his first album and everything and then like we moved in together um after like a year or so we moved in together and uh, he's he needed a like photographer videographer so i picked up the camera and i was like yeah cool like we'll shoot shit like we'll do this we'll do that we'll do cool stuff so we started shooting and um blue media was like the first company i kind of went with so it was like my photography company um so blue media started doing like videos photo shoots i did models i did certain events and stuff um and then I started shooting for Manor. I don't know. Do you, do you yep. remember Manor back yep. in the day? Yeah, Manor yep. used to Manor used to be popping off back in the day. Um, so I used to shoot for them quite a bit as well. So I went under um, one of these great guys. He's a great creative, uh, creative director. Um, Tabs. I don't know if you've ever Tabs. heard. Yep, you've heard of him. Yep, definitely one of the greatest guys I've met here in the media. Um, but yeah, I, I went under his wing for a bit for like a couple of years, and he taught me how to shoot and stuff like that. So Blue yep. Media was always a thing. So Blue was what people always used to call me. Um, but the way Baby got incorporated into the name was I'm the youngest out of two older brothers. So I'm the third. 
Um, and I was always called the baby of the family. Okay. And um, whenever this beard is gone, I look like a 12 year old. I literally <laughs> like, it won't change. It's either 12 or eight. Like I look <laughs> like a baby. So that's why baby kind of stuck. So baby blue is what, when I put those two together, it just sat well. And people sometimes refer it to the color. People sometimes refer it to the actual definition of the name. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a sweet, nice household name. You know, you can put that together. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank I love you. that. Thank you. I thought you were going with my older brother's uh, rap name was Dark Blue or something yeah, no, like no. that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, look, it, it wouldn't be that bad, but no, no, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That would be horrible. <laughs> so, um, what was it like? Uh, what's it like in the in the Sri Lankan music scene um, right now? Are you are you involved in that in any way? Um, I'm involved in a little bit of it because again, um, most of my sound is also part of where I come from and stuff as mm. well. But um, when it comes to like making like like say like so it's called um Hollywood music. So I call it through music in a sense. So that type of music I'm not f heavily tapped into, but I know my older brother, he's 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 done some incorporations here and there over the time. Um but like that scene is very untapped, my man. Like like again, like with Bollywood and stuff being around and the Hindi music and stuff, that's a lot popped off um throughout the years. Now it's only like Tamil music and stuff that's getting tapped into, but it's always been there for years. It's always been a vibe to people. It's always been popping off in our country. But, like, it's a very, like, um, small group of people that kind of know it, so which is kind of just like us. But it's nice to see that it's, like, spreading out now. It's get, getting a bit more international. Um, but, like, with, with the whole sound and stuff, I'm, I'm looking forward to incorporating a lot more of it into mm -hmm. my sound because, um, man, the drums, in, in, like, in our music and the melodies in our music is just incredible. So we'd love to incorporate a lot more of it. But, like, yeah, man, definitely, yeah. And because um, I've learned about Afrobeats last year, yeah, late yeah, last year, yeah. and, then, and then learned about that. And then that was the sound that I was discovering. And anytime I hear Afrobeats now, I, I identify it straight away. Yeah. And you cannot like sit still. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Unless you're absolutely... Man, if you think... Uh, you have if you to think be deaf. A, yeah, 100%. Nah, if you think Afrobeats, you, you can't sit still. You should listen to our music. I'll send you a couple links. You'll actually vibe to it. You'd vibe to it. Like, if you... Whether you're at a club or you're in your house by yourself cooking chicken, like, you'd but, vibe to it. You'd vibe to it. Oh, Afrobeats. That's, that's Afrobeats. Nah, give it... See, what I'll say is... Again, what again. What i say is the Grammys. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, see, this is, this is where the... Com this is where that conversation... Like, can't really go any further just because, like, we're, we're only just starting to come international. Yeah. We're just getting tapped into. So, that's fair. 100%. That's fair. Afrobeats have won, like, Grammys and stuff. 100%. Yeah. It is a vibe. Don't not get me wrong. Give us about two to three years, maybe five mm -hmm. years. We, we might we might sit back down and have that conversation again. But, oh, no, man. definitely. You said you guys have the underground thing locked down. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's like boiler room sets, all the new coming, all the new DJs that are coming. Yeah, hundred percent. All these like new edits are literally like like Hindi or like Tamil or like yeah, just different types of like just um what like Southeast Asian I, like. I need a I need a follow up track on that classic Indian beat. That dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, I need so that. Yeah, I need so a part two yeah. of that shit. See, that see, that's, shit yeah. So so that that there is more like Hindi music. Mm. So Hindi music is. A bit different to like, so, okay, a lot of people get this confused. So Hindi music is very different to like Tamil music. So Hindi music is more like what you would say like your commercial pop music would be in a sense. But like Tamil music is more of that grittiness. You got more of a, more of a bounce and a, and, a, and a jump to it and like that grittiness to it. Whereas like the Hindi music is more like commercial. You do have a bit of the other stuff on tour, the Hindi music, but like they're more commercial in a sense. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. In a sense, yeah, in a sense. But like, is there is there like a version of um of Hindi music that's like more like trap, where they're like talking shit? Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. If you if you haven't listened to um a lot of like Hindi like rap music, there's this guy um again um he recently passed away, rest in peace. But Sid the Moosewala is a big big influence in like the Hindi like hip hop scene, and he just went like global almost just before like he passed away. But like a lot of big guys like Drake and stuff like that um. They've taken influence. They started like referencing his music and stuff. Um, I don't know if they've ever will release stuff like that that they've taken influence. But like just seeing that was like incredible. But there is there's a huge scene with the uh, the Hindi like rap scene and stuff as well. They're popping off as well. But yeah, give us give us about five years. Give yeah, us about five yeah, years. Yeah, we'll start yeah. we'll start popping off crazy. Yeah. I mean, I've uh, I've uh, dived into a bit of Russian rap as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, I can't name a, an artist to save my life, but. Um, it's it's a it's, it's, it's good right? aggressive yeah yeah it's like you feel like you're gonna get fucking Kalishnikov or yeah, something you yeah. know <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. No, you know do you know what's crazy um I listened to one of my one of my bros he put me onto Dutch Dutch rap 
Oh, those yeah, guys, that those, those guys go crazy. Yeah. And they actually got crazy melodies. I was like, yo, what is this? Yeah. But they've been going on for years too. So just seeing like that that type of stuff just keep happening is crazy. Yeah, it's like, wow. So what, what do you think um, like the Western world is starting to get more fascinated with the different cultural From raps? Sounds? And yeah. like yeah. the whole yeah. the whole white rap thing. I mean, off the top of my head, there's just mumble rappers these days. Yeah, yeah. There's there's quite a few. There's quite a few. So now the now the ethnics have taken over. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan mm -hmm. because yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. I've always vibed yeah. more with the ethnic yeah. music. I think I think it's just it's just the over the years of the criticism of man mumble rap mumble rap. So I guess everyone's just going back to their roots and being like, you know what? Let's tap. Let's bring this on. So I'm just seeing every different culture do that. It's sick. Like you yeah. can incorporate the mumble rap. You can incorporate like the new age flow and stuff. Yeah. But just bringing your sound, that what that's what brings it to the next level. Um, you got guys over here like again, my brother Figaro Jones, Babyface Mo. You've got like Monu Crooks. You've got like quite a few guys over in the east and stuff as well that do it. Um, and even the big Polynesian sound as well. They do it quite a bit nowadays as well. So now nah, it's really it's really nice to see. It. But I'm happy mumble raps kind of. Kind yeah, of oh my gone god! Away a bit. Look, I'm not a big <sighs> hater for it because it's like my generation. Do not get me wrong. Like I, I, I like some of it and yeah. I like parts of it, but then there's, yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. like there's there's just some guys or some songs. I'm just like, why? I need to. The way that I listen to music is I need to be able to identify what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know, like if I heard you guys. Be, yeah, <laughs> I heard you guys on tour with um. You have this machine that you plugged in that you're yeah, yeah. carrying around yeah. with you yeah. everywhere yeah, like yeah, your yeah. fucking baby. The auto tune might, yeah. <laughs> what like and then what, I remember when auto tune first became almost well, it wasn't mainstream. It was hated on. Yeah, yeah. T, I remember T Pain, T -Pain was yeah. the kind of pioneer pioneer yeah. for it, and he was the only. <laughs> Aaron was have you seen like that clip? Shit. Have you seen that clip of T Pain where it was it was an awards thing? It's like and they were they were listing all these different songs that were nominated and he featured in every no, that's single crazy. one. What? No, I didn't. No, yeah. I haven't seen that. No, that's and, crazy. And he, he he couldn't lose. He won. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? No, yeah, way. big feature. But um, no, T -Pain, yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah, T Pain's coming to to Juicy, I think too. That's oh, wow. big shout out. Wow, yeah, uh, oh, man, I would love to interview him and just man, like Juicy Fest is gonna be crazy. Oh, this bro. it's actually gonna be crazy, bro, bro. Yeah. But going back to the auto tune thing, yeah. Um, now that it's now that it's been fine tuned mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. can never really tell. Uh, but you guys had it where it was quite obvious still, but you made it work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how did that kind of sort of come about? Man, it was okay. So with that, that was that was also like my very first time of trying an auto tune mic as well. So I I was kind of learning the ropes of it as I went. But um, no nah, man, like honestly, just seeing the difference it makes to your vocals in a live performance, whether it's a small capacity or big capacity, um, like it does a big difference, man. There's there's like there's like um knobs on the thing where you can like turn down how much of the retune you want it to be, or if you want it too robotic or whatever the case is, like you can adjust it. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, like having equipment like that going forward and like seeing how the industry industry yeah. is evolving and stuff, it's it's always key to have. I, I would I would back it. I'm not a big guy that some songs I I chose to do without the auto tune mic just because I like the sound of it yeah. raw. But um, there there are times where I'd be like, no, it does add that little more of like, I don't know, pizzazz, you know, like a little mm. flavor to like to, mm. to the to the um to the performance yeah um but like yeah no like just learning stuff like that i was i thought it was pretty cool like yeah. I, I i actually enjoyed it yeah like learning the auto tune make i was like yo but the one thing do not do it with the auto is talk without the music on when you start talking yo you sound horrible you sound horrible it doesn't matter how sexy your voice is you sound horrible you sound <laughs> horrible as fuck so um keep it on the the theme of producing music what's your kind of process what do you what do you do first do you do you get a beat first? Do you mm. like write the lyrics and then you combine the two? Or what do you do? I listen to beats a lot. Yeah. So um, I would literally just spend probably an hour or two just listening, rinsing through beats mm -hmm. until I kind of kind of come across that one. If I find one, then I'll be like, maybe there's a second one. Maybe I could write, I could do two. So I'll keep that first one. Go find another one. If not, come back to the first one. And where do you find these beats? So I go on YouTube personally. Yeah. Um. So over the kind of a year or so of me making music and going out, I've also reached out to certain producers. So I've got this one guy where he's all the way in Brazil. His name is Bispo. Um, we made a track together. He was on my first tape. Um, so yeah, it was crazy story. So when I went to go purchase that track, um, so you got to go through this app called BeatStars. So when you go on the app, you got to click purchase, what type of like purchase you want to do. So there's like different levels. So you can get like the free WAV with the files, everything, or you can get like just the normal 
normal one, just MP3, whatever, right? So I got the full one, but I wanted to pay for the beat. But the PayPal kept saying, you can't pay for this beat. It's not purchasable, not purchasable. So I was like, what? Like, it's on, on the website. It's not set purchase because every time you purchase something, it's set purchase. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. So I texted the guy on Insta and I was like, oh, hey, bro, like, would love to purchase this beat, blah, 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 blah. And on the website, he was like, he, like obviously on the website, they price their beats crazy high or whatever the price yeah. is. So you got to invest in, it's like an investment buying beats and making sure it lasts long and hits the radios and stuff. It's like an investment. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I would rather message him and purchase the beat. So I messaged him and he was like, yeah, yeah, easy, bro. Just send me 40 bucks for it. And I was like, huh? And I was like, wait, you want me to just, yeah, all right, cool, yeah, we're, yeah, easy. And he's like, I sent him, and he was like, all right, here, take the beat. And then he sent me the beat, got everything done, all the files, everything. And I was like, what the hell? Okay, cool. I kept, I kept the relationship going with him. And then he sent me a beat recently, and he was like, oh, can you hop on this? I want to release it. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So he's like, I'll send you free beats if you just hop on for, uh, hop on a song for me, like every oh, now dude. and then. Yes. I was like, yes, yeah, say less. And he actually makes fire stuff. So I was like, yeah, bro, 100%, I'll oh. do that. So that relationship started getting built. But there's like two other guys I'm still trying to build relationships with. They're just really bad at replying. Um, they take their, like, That's I don't it. know whether it's time difference or not, but they just take their own time. But it's cool. It's cool. I'll build that relationship. But no, I go on YouTube a lot, man. Yeah. Um, sometimes I've got homies that make beats. So I sit with them. We record some stuff together. But usually, I, if it's my alone time, I just hop on YouTube. Just yeah. bring through a couple beats. Um, but I like writing. I spend most of my time writing. Um, just listening and writing to music. Or if it's just listening to the beat on re on repeat and just trying to figure out that one verse. Like, I just like writing. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of my process. I'll listen, i write, and then, like, maybe a day or two after, I'll go back and, like, smash out two songs. But, like, I just want to make sure the writing is perfect. So as soon as I go on, it's either, like, a one take or it's, like, two, three takes. So it's not too long. And, and how long does, a, a, like, a sample or, like, a beat uh, normally go for? With the when you're listening to them on YouTube, yeah. So a beat normally goes. So it's, there's some beats I listen to. Um, I like those beats that like really slap, but they go for like a minute and a half, mm -hmm. um, to like two minutes. So those are like my go-to beats. But I usually listen to some beats that go for like five minutes. Yeah. Um, it's just because the way the samples are layered, the way the drums are layered. Some guys actually go crazy and they just put it out on YouTube. So when you find those like hidden gem kind of beats, yeah. I call them hidden gems. But when you find those hidden gems, you're just like, whoa. Have you have you found a, a like a kind of like a format that you go for in the beats? Like uh, I don't know how to say this, but like like the time code and then yeah, before yeah, before, yeah, it, yeah. before it does like a drop. Yeah, yeah. You like yeah, either say yeah. something or go quiet. Okay, so the way I kind of do it is like. I don't really do the structure. Like the structure is basically like chorus and verse, right? Mm -hmm. That's like yeah. your basic structure. Okay, I keep that in mind and I go, all right, cool. If I'm writing something, go do chorus structure. But sometimes it would end up being the verse first and then the chorus second. Mm -hmm. So it's just depending on like how I'm feeling on the beat because it could have breaks, it could have stops. But if I'm not feeling too much of the breaks and stops, I'm just going to keep going or I'm just going to work something out yeah. with the beat, you know? But like it depends how you feel with the beat because like it's a big thing, man. Like you can write about anything. Like I could sit here and just probably just write something rubbish right now but like i can put it on any type of beat but like if you're not feeling it on that specific beat you're never going to bring that emotion that sound yeah that feeling into the song that like that's why back in the day people like oh i miss songs back in the day because the feeling and emotion that's why kind of i feel like is a bit lost nowadays it's like no feeling and real emotion it's just like the beats bouncy let's just bounce to the thing you know but it's like you also got to put emotion and feeling into it yeah i feel that and it's a similar vibe with um, music uh yeah. music videos yeah 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 or yeah. like i remember growing up and listening to a track and i would close my eyes i'm like <laughs> i know exactly what the music video Videos, would look yeah, like facts, and facts, i've always facts. wanted to like make music videos from mm -hmm. it but then I also had, um, I would hear um, just sounds yeah. and I would like, this would be a good sound if someone shot this specific shot of, yeah, I don't know, yeah, some nature right? or some scenery. So you want to bring that expression out from mm. that just sound you heard. So yeah. it's like, you got to do the same thing when you speak onto, yeah. the, onto the track, you know, you got to bring that expression out. If you don't and you're just doing it on like a mellow tone or like a deep voice, because you just got a deep voice, then like. I'm sorry, like it's not gonna, yeah. it's not gonna bang as much as you want it to. It's not gonna bang. But. So what, what, uh, what resembles for you as a banger? Like Ooh. personally, when you're writing something, you're gonna be like, to you personally, this is a banger. Yeah. Obviously, you're trying to <laughs> do it for your audience as well. But that'd yeah. be my next question. But yeah. for you, what goes? Yeah, this slaps. I see. Obviously, something that's catchy, something that's like that keeps you engaged quite a bit, whether it's the chorus and to the hook or back to the chorus or the bridge. Um, and it's also like, again, it's like the cadence on the track. It's like if someone's flowing like heavy, like you you hear like when Drake flows on a track, right? You're like, whoa, I want to rap this while I can learn the lyrics quick, easy, or I like this flow. 
and that just becomes a memorable thing. Whether you hear the track, you're singing the track a cappella while you're cooking or you're washing dishes, you know, it's just the, the catchiness of the flow and the cadence. Um, that's like a big thing for me. If as long as you're catchy there, I don't care how the melody sounds. Like if you're catchy, I'm listening to it. Like if you're flowing great, uh, I'm listening to it. That's kind of a banger to me. It's not every song is a banger, but that's what rec like class is a banger to me. Mm -hmm. I would say yeah. It definitely helps with our. Uh content that they're talking about as well yeah yeah, yeah content yeah, yeah it's gonna be contextual yeah because sometimes it could be like beef raps which you just want to catch up on <laughs> yeah you want to see what what issues they have yeah, like, yeah, I've, yeah i've heard songs where it's like the guy in the chorus talks about or guy or whoever talks about like love in the chorus and then talks about shelling someone in the verse it's yeah. like what like I, that yeah, doesn't make sense a lack to me, of you know context what, I mean? of what they're talking yeah, about yeah so it's like if you can make it looked like a story, start to finish. Yeah. Like a full, like a full book, then you're good. I can see how like, that. That's a banger to me. One thing see. I've seen in um, Blue's growth uh, in the last, you know, few months we've started working together, is uh, his songwriting's gotten a lot more mature. Like, for lack of a better I appreciate term. Appreciate that. Like, I think you know we, we we joked about the dogs thing before, but like now when he talks about his dogs, you actually get a proper <laughs> picture of. Okay. What he's talking so about. So more yeah. articulate, eh? Yes. Yeah. yes. More articulate, more feeling, like even with, with One Love that's coming out soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is like one of the first songs I heard of yours that I was like, damn. Yeah. There's one line that uh, I guess I, I trusted us or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you run that for yeah. me? Real quick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one, one thing with the, yeah, with yeah. the questions, um, just to segue, continue, and we'll get on to the, your new yeah, music yeah, soon. For sure, for sure. Um, with, uh, with when you're making music, and this is a creative thing yeah. uh, that I noticed from, uh, for, for videos, for yeah. just content in general. Um, how do you get, like, how do you get the feedback from your audience? Uh, like, do you measure it off of how many times that it's been listened to? Mm -hmm. And then if it's been listened to a lot of times, do you go, okay, that's a strategy we're going to continue on to the next track? Or how do you do that? How do okay. you measure that? Like before I drop something? Uh, before, during, and after, yeah. Before, during, and after. Okay. So if it's before, some things we do is like we either put out a reel or like I'll put it on my story. If a lot of people react back onto the story, I'll get a lot of reactions back. I'd be like, okay, this could be a potential. A um, couple of weeks down, I might make a post with like a bunch of tracks involved and pop that one in there. People still like that one. That's another, okay, that's like twice now you're ticking saying you like that one. Sometimes you premiere it on um, on live. Yeah, just so just going live, just air it out to people. People start sending like fire emojis back. You're like, okay, cool. That's three times now people are saying they like it. Okay, so that's now like a potential single that I might run with. Um, so yeah, that's like, I guess before, but if it's like something I'm already like decided I want to drop, but I'm not too sure how people are going to receive it. I do what we're doing right now. It's just like put out literally reels after reel after reel. And just see how we go from there. So, like, the real thing is, like, a new thing for me. Because, like, this One Love song, um, I didn't want it to go over the heads. But I also didn't want it to do too much as well. Because, like, it's a very short song. And it's, like, it's a very lyrical, that song. So, I wanted to just have lyrics in it. Just the lyric video. Nothing too crazy. So, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't too sure. But then seeing the reels come out, like, the last two, three days. First one got, like, two, 2.5. And I was, like, oh, okay, cool. Like, a lot of people like this. The second one's on a K. I just posted one just before I got here. So hopefully I'm going to check that <laughs> after this and see what's. So like I've never got that sort of engagement before when I first dropped the tape, my my initial tape. So just seeing that and I was like, okay, cool. Like this is this is something I might just keep running and see how it goes. Something I ask uh, every creator that I interview almost is, would you still do it if, the, if you weren't getting the views on yeah, social media? 100%. 100%. It's never about how many views I get. It's always the, the main reason that made me start it was the passion. Yep. So it doesn't matter. There's always going to be someone that knocks it off. Yep. Um, there's one thing I say in my music is always keep your head high. If you always keep your head high, no one will know how much you failed or how much you like actually copped wrong, you know? So yeah. So that's always been a thing. So it, I could get like 100 views on a video and I would still go push Rack to be like, can we drop something again in like two <laughs> months? I don't care. Like, can we try? Yeah. And he'd be like, yeah, bro, let's do it. So I think so I think one thing I've loved about working with, with Blue is um, there's he's generally a creative. You know, you know how you meet people that are like, there's there's an end goal. Mm. You know? mm. But for someone like you, both of you guys are very similar where it's like, you're going to do this regardless of if yeah. the yeah. views come yeah. and if you're going to get paid for it. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, to go back to what you were saying before, where it's like the creative process, do you use numbers as a benchmark? Mm -mm -mm. Is sometimes you find that people shoot themselves in the foot when they use numbers as a benchmark. Like yeah. you want to go in creating as purely as possible Whatever comes out the other end is like yeah. that. That is always a, a bonus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the question for you next is: um, when you transition from pure passion, mm. which you hopefully keep because that's the game, yeah. 
to then, okay, you have an audience to impress okay. or that is impressed by yeah. you. Yeah. And then do you start feeling a pressure? A little bit. Okay. There's always pressure. Like even if it's like you're going for a show, mm -hmm. you're about to perform, there's always that little nerves that kick in. But it's like that nerves is what's saying like, you're not going to flop. You've got this pipe, you know, just like be, just be careful. Like just, just do your thing. Just don't do anything too crazy. Don't, don't go over the edge, but like do you. So I guess the nerves is always good. And it's good because it keeps you on your toes as well. Mm. It's like, okay, you can't, like, you got eyes on you. You can't flop the image. You can't flop your message. So don't. So, you know, that that little, like, gut feeling or that little butterflies in you is just going, like, check yourself real quick. It's always a good thing. It's always a good thing. I never look at it as a bad thing. Um, like, I tell them every time I, before I go and say, I'm like, like, they ask you, am I a bit nervous? I'm like, yeah, just a little bit. But they'll be like, nah, you got this, you guys. I'll be like, yeah, no, no, we got this, we got this. And then yeah. when I get there, Cool, we're shutting it down. We're like dapping each other on stage. We're going crazy. Like, um, if you were there for the um Eats Me Sweat show, that was just vibes. I was feeling a bit of nerves before. I've never done Metro City. Mm. Um, I was feeling a bit like nerves in the backstage. I was just like listening to my music and stuff. And then he's like, "You good? You good?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm good. I'm good." And then got the stage. He brought me out. He's like, "Oh, my favorite artist, Baby Blue." And then I was like, "Ah, right, cool, let's go." And then we just like went yeah. out, threw the can into the it's crowd. It's a bit of a cheat code for Blue because I MC almost every event. But yeah, he's literally, there. literally, he just <laughs> so gets like he just gets the blood like. Yeah, like, like, it, like right, he cool. feels more at home because yeah, I'm already flex, up there flex. with him. Like, piped up, piped more up. Comfortable. Yeah, I feel I more comfortable that. in a sense. Yeah. So that that big question is uh, something um, critical for a lot of creators that I've seen, even myself, going from. Doing it for fun completely, yeah. completely with no strategy of monetization. Yeah. I, I had my full time job as a school teacher going, sweet, I'm yeah. set. Yeah. I can do whatever the fuck I want on yeah. the weekends or <laughs> at night time. Yeah. And then I started to just Man, I would share. love to be in your class. I would <laughs> Thanks, have bro. loved to be in your Thanks, class. Bro. <laughs> so the, just sharing it was the difference. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I tell people when they still can't tell me that they can't put one piece of content out a day or even a fucking week yeah facts, facts. and i'm like oh man i used to be that bro i can't lie i can't lie i used to be i he would he would ground me and be like bro you don't make reels i'm like yeah just don't got the time literally no like, no I, I, oh. i'm sorry i used to be that guy but now i know that's a that's a flop excuse don't ever use that it excuse. is and and like i saw this meme yesterday and it said um how dumb is it that we grew up wanting to to do our thing mm. and now we have to post content on social on media to 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 make it work yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. i'm like well shit <laughs> it's just the way it is yes yeah, you know yeah, like both. i know that you didn't do uh music to be a marketer yeah yeah but the best greatest of all timers marketed their music pretty the, well. like yeah, like yeah. michael jordan right <laughs> yeah the the movie air like oh yeah you've, you've seen it did you know his mum was the reason mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that he got the Bro, night I, yeah i didn't know that I Wait. was like, what the fuck? I swear that I swear he I think he mentioned it in um did he not mention that in last dance? Did he I am pretty sure he I, mentioned it. I that. must have missed it. Okay, okay, yeah. But, but no, but that, I was like that, yeah. you know, but like that that there is you know, and he's got charisma, he's got obviously the talent. Yeah. But then but then you look at other uh professionals like Conor McGregor, yes, right? Yes. If he wasn't as charismatic mm -hmm. and stuff, he probably wouldn't have got into their heads. Maybe he would have lost. True, true. You know, that's true. So there's true. there's a there's a there's an emotional battle. You gotta play, yeah. You know, and if you 100%. and if you look confident, you look charismatic, you look like you're a winner. Yeah, that will just come to fruition because people will lean into you. Hundred percent. But if you're going to be closed in and yep. and and yep. and say, but I've got the talent, I'm like, <laughs> fucking show it there. Yeah, facts. Show facts. me that you have the talent. Facts. I don't know that you fucking exist. Yeah, you're just telling me. You're like so, I need to see it. Yeah, yeah. Facts. And facts. like facts. I remember twenty. Yeah, late 2018, Instagram stories came out. And mm. I'm like, fuck's mm. sake, this is another Snapchat. It's yeah. going to be disappearing. Everyone 24. was shitting on that update. Everyone, and, yeah. and I remember, I remember I got told, bro, you're doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. Just do a fucking story about you doing it. Yeah. And then within a few weeks, I had um, someone say to me, Sev, you're going out taking photos. Can I come along? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Sick. And then three weeks later, I had someone booked in every night. That's crazy. For free, yeah. just for fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then my missus said, "What? Like, can you like stay home one night? I want to hang out." I was like, "Yeah, true, <laughs> facts." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I was like, "Let's do this once a week, but like with a group of people, mm. right?" Oh, true. Yeah. So that was like a couple of weeks later. I had twenty people rock up, forty people rock up, Damn. and then three months later, I I was on the tail end of my third event that had hundred and twenty people. That's crazy. What? Yeah, I called it Sev's Tours. 
Okay, and I, we, I would have seen that on Insta, but okay, we went around. We went around Perth, taking crazy. photos of like random spots around Perth. Then we got models involved, what? and it was a whole thing. And then I went Sev's Tours Part Two, and we did it in Claysbrook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Sev's Tours Part Three, we did it in Fremantle. That was a fucking vibe. And no. the way that I marketed that, yeah. I was just like making shit up. There was this app called Mojo that, yeah, uh, yeah. that released yeah. early days. And it was like this cheat code that I had of, of these templated stories that you can make. Oh, what? And people are like, how are you making these stories? I'm yeah. like, Mojo, this fucking template just got all Is these that effects. App, Mojo's? Yeah, dude. Okay. Like full on okay. plug. It's like 50 bucks a year and now, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. now it's like all this whole thing because like, yeah, yeah, they've yeah. developed it because they've obviously succeeded. Wow. I tried to hit them up for a plug because I was an that early adopter. That would be crazy. But man, I, I wow. remember I sat there for a whole day, literally for eight hours on my phone because I was so obsessed with this little tool. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I would be like, holy shit, I've got this brilliant idea to make this story you for my wedding photography page or something. Yeah. And then I'll be like, all right, find a photo, bang, bang. I like this effect, bang, bang, bang. Post. And yeah, I'll just do true. it 12, 15 Damn, times a day cool. for my wedding photography, for my Sev's tours. And the shit blew up. Yeah. But I love doing it. Yeah, facts. But facts. something unlocked me to go, fuck it, let's do it. And when you found those other things that like modules yeah. and stuff, when you found those things to kind of help to mm. do what you need to do, it just made yeah. it easier, right? Yeah. So like, but I had all that time to yeah. do that. Yeah, facts. And exactly. I became obsessed. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> when the musician says to me, I don't, don't want to market my shit, and I'm like, Cap. do you have time to market your shit? Yeah. Oh, I do. I'm like, well, why the fuck don't you yeah, do it? Facts. Do you have facts. the money yeah. to have someone else do it? They're like, facts. no, I don't have any money. Well, like. Well, what yeah. the fuck do you want then? Yeah, no. Literally. What do you want me it's, to do? It's never, it's never like, oh man. Okay, look. It's also like the time thing is very important. It's also like here, it's also very costly to kind of promote or market things like that. But like in all honesty, it's like if you build certain connections, or if you know certain people, or if you if certain people like you and they bring you along, then definitely like they'll they'll be down to help. They'll be down to push you. It's like yeah. it's always just building the relationship first. It's not always the money. You have to be transparent though. I, I can give 100%. you one example that Rack will know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe you as well. Mm -hmm. I leaned in and I was like, this is sick. I love this. Yeah. I will do this for fun. Yeah. Fact. Two years later, made it do you know something. Do you know what's crazy? I think I think I mentioned this to you when we were on the tour um, at, um, in Melbourne. Uh, it's the first time I met you. Yeah. And um, you came into so I was I was working at this place called Stateside. Um. So it was in Jundi, and you Try came in. Trying to say in. the name of the business. Oh so. uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was working somewhere, <laughs> but like yeah, you came in. You came into store, and um, it was a video of you doing the Mario Kart. You were in the Mario Kart or something, and you had about like a hundred thousand like views or something like that. And I always wanted because I knew I knew your um I knew your sister so she came and she showed me I was like wait what that's your brother <laughs> I was like okay cool and I was like hundred thousand and TikTok just kind of like started kind of booming in yeah. that sense so I was like a hundred thousand I was sick and then like literally what has it been two years now since yeah. then like about two years and now like you're doing all this and I was like yeah. damn man like it's a full circle moment for me to see yeah. it so I'm like this is sick like I'm I'm actually really proud to see it bro like it's actually like you've done really well thanks bro thanks bro the going going back to this whole helping each other thing and if if you don't have the time yeah but you have the money you have to invest yeah. if you don't have the money but you have the time you have to do it yourself yeah. and take the time to learn it yeah and if you have a little bit of money you have to get someone that knows how to do it Fact. to teach you, yeah. right? I've done everything yeah. under that. And uh, there's times that have been really successful. Mm -hmm. There's times that have been an absolute waste of to my time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes also their time, or not their time, but their money. Yeah. Because they didn't capitalize on it. Yeah. And there are examples out there that I wish I could specifically mention yeah. in detail, <laughs> but I won't, <laughs> that I'm just like... I hope I wish you all the best. Yeah, hundred percent. But fuck yeah, me, yeah. you fucked it. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, hundred percent. Just like it's like back in the day when I started taking photos and for fun with um, different um, businesses, mm. and then they're like, "Oh, thanks for the photos." I remember one specific place. They're a big place. Again, yeah. not going into detail, but the creative agency, or not the creative agency, the marketing agency. There's nothing creative about this agency yeah, at all. Yeah. They're just a fucking PR place, and. They, uh, I got the job through a mate, yeah. and then I won the videography for it and wow. the photography for wow. it. Yeah, it was, it That's was crazy. Yeah, it's it's a place where you go do stuff and stay there, and okay. it's north of the river, and that's all I'll say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you can, no and you, and you can, you can shoot weddings there. Yeah, 
Anyway, nice. The place nice. is amazing. Okay. I love the place. Yeah. The 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 internal mm, teams mm, mm, that were mm, in charge, yeah. amazing. Okay. But the fucking marketing agency they hired shit, shit the <laughs> fucking bed. No, nah, that's so and bad. And that was that's my so first bad. taste of well, that sucks for them. Mm. My photos were amazing, but they uploaded them like shit. And with shit captions and the videos that they posted, because my, my mate was collabing with me. He did all the droning stuff. Okay, yeah. Just oh, nice. shit house. Okay, yeah. And I'm like, you you guys are you guys are getting paid to do this. Yeah, and you're facts. not doing facts. it. Facts. Yeah. And then that's my art that you're putting behind it. Mm. So that's what kind of motivated me to start up a little bit more of like a yeah. workshop sort of thing. True. To empower True. the brands yeah. or yeah. the businesses yeah. to go, okay. You need to learn how to do this yourself mm. or if you hire someone else, you need to learn if they're shit or not. Yeah, facts. Because facts. if a creator facts. makes something and they post it and it's shit, what marketing agencies tend yeah. to do is yeah. blame it on the creator, Damn. not themselves. Yeah. They burn the creator and then they keep going. But what yeah. they're really doing is burning the money the whole facts. time for their facts. clients. That's true. Yeah. So but going back to you in this industry and yeah. in, in yeah. the music industry, like, yeah. man – like you've done a couple of music videos. Yeah. And what is the difference between putting out music without a music video versus one with? It depends, man. If it's like something you really want to pop, you want to have a video with it. Um, something that you really want to take off or get playlisted or get it charted or whatever the case is, you need to have like a booming video with that. Yeah. Hard. Um, it just helps us. Like you said, marketing, it just helps big with marketing. The mar marketers or labels or whoever see it mm. can see your face, can see the aesthetic of your music and see what you bring to your music and the people, how they take in your music, whether they're dancing or they're vibing, jumping, whatever the case is, how the music video is. It just helps um, having a music video. But if it's something that like you just, you just want to release it, spend some time, like, you know, you just want to drop a couple singles out, you can, you can do lyric videos. I would say it's always best to have a video, like visualizer, lyric video or music video. It's just always best to have just because like as much as they can just hear it in their ears they want to see something too. Yeah. Um it's and nowadays people love seeing stuff yeah, more absolutely. than just hearing it, you know what I mean? So mm. if they can see it and hear it, you you want their heart to 100%. So I think like, it's um it's a benefit to the creative or whoever's putting yeah. the video out. Um yeah. people need to see that your what, what your vision is for the song. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like even if it's a visualizer, like what yeah. characters are in the visualizer? It's like a visual what? aid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like it gives 100%. it gives the, the the audience like an idea. It's like of, this yeah. person's this kind of person, sort of thing. Love you know that. what I mean? Yeah. Love it's that. Like, it's like you know how when you watch a movie the first time you don't get it, but like when you watch it again you get it again, mm. just from the context and stuff. So it's like when you hear the song without the music video, yeah, you don't really understand the full picture. But when you see the video, you get the full yeah. Picture. Debbie does Dallas yeah. the third time was an absolute <laughs> insane <laughs> fucking. Like it made more sense. <laughs> Blue's so young, he doesn't understand that <laughs> reference. The way the room just started laughing, I was just like, oh, okay, wait. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, is that like an old school, like... Oh, yeah. no, let's okay, not okay, 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 We're not going there? Okay, okay, old not, school. Okay, old okay. school, bro. It's okay. very old school. Very old school. Very uh, 80s. Yeah. It's like golden age. So um, now, now, that, now that we're here and you put out some music, yeah. you're putting out some more music soon. Tell me about that. 100%. Yeah, so I've got a single coming out this Saturday. Oh, um, Yeah, shit. so on the 7th, it's coming out. Um, it's called One Love. It's um. You mean Friday? Saturday. 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 The seventh, seventh is Friday. Oh, it's my seventh, birthday. Friday, I would know. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so seventh. The seventh. The Friday. Sorry, my bad. Seventh <laughs> of the. Oh, fun fact, guys. The seventh of the seventh is actually Sevo Day. It's my day. Wow. See, yeah, there's a lot of things you, happening. Fuck your birthday. My actual birthday. Yeah. Fair see, enough. this is this is why I chose the perfect the day. So there's a lot of things happening on this day. So yeah. it comes up this Friday, Sevo's day, Brack's birthday. Jordan's Brian Tank's birthday as well. Oh, yeah. Fifth so, birthday for BT, yeah? Yes. Big and circle then, jerk. Yeah, so we've got a couple shows happening on the weekend as well. But like, yeah, so 7th of July is when it's dropping. It's got a music video to it. It's more of a music video, lyric video with it. So you can learn the lyrics if you want to sing along. Sweet. But it's, um, yeah, it's just more of a freestyle in a sense. Um, Something just to kind of put the past all together and then kind of show what's happening in the, what's going to happen in the future or Wait. what's about to happen in a sense but um yeah like it's like my first um single in a while so it's the first single to i think four or five that we've got planned so there's a whole story behind each of them so i hope you guys stay tuned and um keep listening because um yeah we got videos coming out every other day so yeah definitely so i've got this first one and then um yeah i'll i'll probably send you the link so you can listen to it oh. but i won't i won't i won't stream it out on here i'm excited you guys. so he'll get the private links but um yeah no you're in I'll the video sev 
Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, shit. yeah. You're actually yeah. in the video. Yo, yeah, he actually made the cut into the video. He did, he did. We're all vibing in the airport. And well, I went up to dab everyone. So Seb's in that one. Makes a little cameo. Rack's in that <laughs> one. You might see a lot of big dogs in that one, too. So, um, yeah, no, stay tuned. That comes out this um, Friday. Um, in the morning? Yeah, I'm guessing in the morning. It depends. It might come out Thursday it's, it's night. A busy, so, like, it's a busy day, so I think, yeah. like, hopefully keep, yeah. when, when we've uploaded it, it do you know what do you know what makes it easier if you follow me on spotify <laughs> yeah. it makes it 10 times easier no one would have to i mean you do a pre-save the, on the ground you do a pre-save? Well. yes there's a pre-save link yeah there's a pre-save so link? pre-save yeah. link in my bio um and pre-save link all over my instagram so pre-save the, the link will be in this episode on the youtube and the spotify look so up yeah. baby blue on uh, on ig and you'll find everything just, you need. Just, go. just go to the description of whatever you're listening this on you'll be fine yeah, I got 100%. you. I got 100%. you. I got you. Well, thank I don't you, have guy. you. Ryan's got you. So. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> thank so, you. Thank you. So, um, a little bit of value to the audience. All right. Yeah. I'm a young rapper or wannabe yeah. rapper or thinking cool. about doing rapping. Yeah. Where do I start? Man, um, starting what you want to make. Like, <laughs> okay. that's kind of how Blue started, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, like, if you like, man, if you just want to start making music or just recording off the bat and you've never done it before. Just find what you want to make. Like, find the sound you want to make. If you find the sound you want to make, find someone that's, like, either in the industry or know someone that's in the industry and pass them your stuff. Get them to listen to you. Like, I met, like, before, like, I got my shit off. Like, I I met Rack, like, ages ago. Ages ago when we, he was doing interviews with my brother and stuff. But, like, we never had a relationship going on about music and stuff. And then after my brother left and stuff, like, I didn't have anyone to kind of send music to. So I was just making music. I was just writing, making music, making music with my guys. And then one day I called Rack. I was like, hey, bro, do you want to, can I come over? Can I just show you some stuff? And he was like, yeah, bro, for sure. So I went over, showed him some stuff. And he was like, man, you speak like an old guy. Like, you talk like an older man. You're like, talk about life lessons and stuff. And I was like, oh, no, thank you. But he was like, yeah, bro, like, I can see something with this. Let's, let's get it going. And it was just off that one conversation that all of this kind of got built off in a sense. But, like, yeah, if you're just starting off and you don't know where to start, find the sound. Once you find the sound and you know what you want to talk about, you know what you want to do, bring it up to people. If you find someone on it, like Perth is so local, bro. Like you can find anyone. You can find myself. You can message me and be like, yo, can I come record? I'll be like, yeah, I'm done. Like, well, show me what you got. Fuck, so, RIP like your that. DMs. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Like we, we've got a studio um, <laughs> literally across the street from you. So it's like, it's very close by for anyone. Like, if you're new, you want to come don't record. D- don't dox me into this shit. Yeah, no, 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 but like, no, no, not, not, not studio this studio, is, but we got, we got one right across the street. Uh, it's, a, it's a full studio. It's a new one. I want but kids like, rocking up at my door. No, no, no. If you, if you guys, guys want to hop into the mic, you want to record, <laughs> you want to make something, you, you see yourself being an artist in a couple of years, sh- hit me up. Hit, I think, hit me I think up, the one thing up, that comes like, to mind is uh, you got to like, actually like really want, want to do this mm-hmm, and hustle mm-hmm. your ass off. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not oh, easy to, to get off hustle. your feet. Sure, I sure. think you, like, a lot of people think it's as easy as recording a song and then yeah. putting it up there in Spotify and then hoping for the best. Oh, man, if, nah. you, if, you, if you come, on, if you come into the studio the and you can't flow on the beat, I'm making you pay for the session. <laughs> if you come to the studio and you can flow on the beat, you're not paying for the session. It's, yes. It's calm, well, you know? If you come to the studio and you can't flow on the beat, you're getting laughed out of that studio yeah, session badly. And then you're quickly. paying the invoice to it. Bro, yeah. like, if, I um, can, if I can record... <laughs> I've it's, heard your it's, song. It's a doggy dog world, man. Like, I've heard you your song. I mean? So, so quick story. So, when we were about to leave Melbourne, um, Sev decided he was gonna, you know, make a song, and he did. He oh did. Oh God, no. He made. He made a whole. It was a whole minute. It was a whole minute or two. A minute thirty, I think. A minute. A minute thirty. It was. It was under. It was under the Instagram reels threshold. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. it was the first artist I've seen shoot in an airplane with no one ever questioning him about anything. So he shot in the airplane. <laughs> he, Shoot in an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> he shot in an airplane. <laughs> he the wrote Russians the song. are coming. <laughs> and then he, he put it all together within, what, the three hours we were we were flying? Yeah. And then as soon as we landed, he showed me the video, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I'm going to start dropping music. I was the like, reason why I initially you're about said, to upset oh, a lot of people if you did that. The reason why I initially said, oh, no, was because I thought it was, you were going to talk about the rap that Sev wrote uh, no. in the van about, <laughs> no, no. about uh, me throwing his toothbrush away. That's the yeah. more sensible <laughs> today. Uh, that's no, but like, yeah, no, like I've, I've, I've seen you make something. So it's like, again, when you, when you want to go back to about making time, it's like everyone's got the time. Like I used to make that excuse of like never and had the time, so it's like that's that's why I made that right. Yeah, yeah. I, I know like the rapping thing isn't like I mean fuck 
I yeah. mean, I've got a rap name now, Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the name, Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> I was the, the, sitting next to J Dog and Stan, and yeah. they just started pissing themselves. No, nah, that was too funny. And then just quick. like before and we you took chose off, the best two guys to do it with J Dog oh, and Stan. They're, 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 they're oh, the funniest. Stan. They're actually the funniest. And then like, Shout out to my guys. yeah, the uh, the crew got amongst it, and then like it was just a whole it was mm. a whole movie. But like, I love the dance moves in that video. Eh? Oh, oh, the, the, the <laughs> twisting and the the, the wine bottle. <laughs> But um, you know, like I, I've shown some people this, like some yeah. oh, some young yeah. okay, young cool. young people yeah, cool, cool. who are getting into the rap game, yeah, and they looked at it like, what the fuck, yeah. But then I'm like, but in their head, it's what like, what have you done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, but you see, so the thing is, like, when you show them that, I bet you they would be like, what the fuck? But in their head, it's like itching. It's like, damn, this guy just took like three hours to make this whole reel. I can't exactly. make a reel. Like, you know what I mean? No, no. It's 100%. Got no excuse. Like, I will make the dumbest shit in your niche, in your industry. And then I'll flex on you saying, I have done one thing. You have done zero. Yeah. If you're going to shit on my one thing because I have no right to be in yeah, yeah. that space, what I don't give you? a fuck. Yeah, you're, you're, you're completely invisible in that space. Yeah. Because you haven't put out anything, you know? Or got anyone attracted to it. Yeah, yeah. 100%, yeah. 100%. Yeah, and if you put out another 100 of the nothings, 100 times nothing is still nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, fuck. <laughs> Look, man, if you, can, if you can study stocks, you can study marketing and music. It's very simple. It's not as hard as stocks. So you can definitely do that. <laughs> so it's not that hard, 100%. I learned it the hard way. And look at me now, I'm here with Sev. So <laughs> that's, how, that's how you go, you know, when you start that's doing it. something. That's it. So what else is there uh, uh, on the on the horizon for you? Man. And uh, before you answer that, can we get the red mic going? I've got the segment. It's just in the bag, at the Ooh. back on the table. Um, yeah, what's, what's coming on? I mean, apart from the music stuff, a whole lot of um, relationship building and connection making, yeah. man, for myself. Oh, you're good, you're good. Um, yeah, connection building and relationship Cheers. making. Oh, wow. Do I hold this? No, not yet. The, oh, okay, the segment cool. hasn't started. Oh, okay. Go on. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Like, what's what's in store for me apart from the music and stuff is definitely meeting a lot more artists to feature with. Um, mm. you know, building travel. a relationship with them, travel a lot more. I'm trying to go down to like Mayan, so Southeast Asia, do like Malaysia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, mm. Singapore, Dope. tap in a bit more there in the industries as well. Um, yeah, man, just a whole lot we've got planned. Like, I don't want to give out too much of the blueprint. Um, because we got a, yeah, so we, yeah, exactly. So you see, it's either <laughs> the name just works, man. Damn it. That's uh, going to have to be the, the name of the next hey, project. Look, Jay-Z bro, like, about hey. to send me a lawsuit, bro. If I did that. No, um, I mean, you spell, <laughs> no, no, but you spell it, you spell it with EU, not U. Yeah, true, true, true. I could, yeah, I could problem solved. Shout out Jay. But like, nah, definitely, man. There's, there's quite a bit more. And like, obviously we've got like you guys on board now. So we'd have you guys doing a lot more and we can see a lot more from each other. So yeah, man, there's, yeah, I'm kind of keen, man. It's, it's been a while. So I've, I've waited quite a bit. So All right. let's do this. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to the, uh, the speed round of the red mic. So bring that up to your, to the, to the mouth. You still need the other mic because okay, that's the actual that's cool. mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not plugged into anything. It's just a feature. Oh, no. Nice. <laughs> and, um, and then, yeah, so. Keep it up to you. What's so good, we've got good. this section, the red mic. If you're watching on YouTube, you get to visually see this because it's cooler and I'll probably make a snippet about this. So Let's go. do do not uh, overthink the answers. Okay. Quick fire answers Damn. as well. All okay. right. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Here we go. We're starting. We've got um, the dream venue to drop a concert. Up to stadium. Opta Stadium, yep. anywhere in the world, and it's Opta, Opta Stadium. Stadium. I told you, my city, bro. Respect, <laughs> respect. Um, one day, um, uh, Cootie's uh, making a docker about you like he did for Kanye. Ooh. But uh, it's uh, it's an actor that's going to be playing you. Which actor will play you in your own documentary? Hustle Minaj. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, if you had any female artist that you would do a sex scene with, who would it be? Oh shit! It'd be my queen. I like it. I like it. Beyonce, <laughs> man. I would. I would. Same. Uh, <laughs> favorite. Uh, favorite uh, food to chow down on after a uh, a good uh, stint at Bright Tank. Oh man, can it be a restaurant? Yeah, Uncle Billy's. Oh yes, Uncle Billy's. That is the number oh, one spot. We have to go to Uncle yeah, Billy's 100%. now. We have to do it after a night out. Fuck. We have to. All of us. Okay, so Uncle Billy's for the audience uh, in Northbridge, Chinatown, is the spot to go mm -hmm. after a night out. 100%. If you are uh, under the age of 25, you probably go to Macca's or some yeah, fucking kebab baby. shop. Uh, but Boring Uncle shit. Billy's is where you go. Oh, 2 a.m. 
My order is uh, uh, deep fried tentacles. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Straight up. Yes. There's a dish called Singapore Mee Fung. Yes. yes. Which is all time. And then there's another one called Ho Fung, depending I've on how much. I've never tried the Ho Fung. It's like thicker, thicker noodles okay, yeah, with yeah, beef. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then you've got the uh, prawn crackers, yes. a staple. Yeah, yeah. If you're feeling the fried rice, then you get the fried rice. Mm-hmm. Um, sweet and sour pork. Yeah. And if you really want to eat a lot, I would probably put in some uh, bow buns or something. Yeah, in we're there. definitely, definitely going Uncle yeah. Billy's together, bro. That, that's, that's, <laughs> uh, fuck, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, uh, bro, like the lady there, she's been there forever. Yeah, they're so nice. Yeah, they're actually, yeah. They're actually lovely people. Yeah. It's, Stevie Wonder photo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, we'll could we'll continue the quick fire round. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, favorite movie. Favorite movie. Oh, can it be like a like trilogy? Yeah, Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. I'm a Star big Star Wars guy. Love yeah. that. Love I love it. Star Wars. Love that. Yeah. Um, fan of Jar Jar or no? Oh, I'm a fan of Jar Jar. Yeah, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, but my favorite out of all definitely be Anakin. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But I love R two D two and um um C three PO as a duo. They just like they just made the movie so wholesome. Respect. I don't know. Over the years, they just made things look like family related. So yeah. that's why I kind of liked it growing up. But yeah, yeah no, definitely Anakin, R two D two, and C three PO. Love that. Yeah. Love that. All right, most overrated rapper. Most overrated rapper in the city. Hashtag no hate ever. Oh, sh- let's say in the game. In the game. Okay, okay. In the game. In the game. In the game. In the game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, in, in the game, most overrated rapper. Uh, wow, no hate. That's hard. No I, hate. I really don't have hate like that. All right, but most, let's go. Most underrated. Then. Most underrated rapper. Wow. Um, right now, for myself, I'd say So Fuego. Okay. Um, or if if anything, it would be Lancy Fox. Okay. Yeah, I understand. I've no idea who that is. Nancy Fox is UK. So if you if you ever like like Playboy Cardi and stuff, you should listen to him. He does like this cool ambient noise, ambience noise and stuff. Yeah, dope. But like, no, he's cool. He's cool. Sick. Um, but yeah, those two, hundred hundred percent. Yeah. And if you weren't rapping or making music, what would you be doing? Business. Be making companies or signing deals or owning parts of companies. I love business. Like that's that's so that's what music and business pretty go, goes pretty well together. Um, but yeah, no, if I wasn't doing music, I'll do business. Yeah, 100%, man. Love that. That's yeah. the red mic. Let's go. That's the red mic. And then finally, yeah. this could be an extended answer if you want. Yeah. One piece of advice wow. you give to anybody, what would it be about anything? Um, look, a lot of people would give a lot of advice. The one thing I could only say is, and the one thing I always say in my music is this line, keep your head up high. I think I mentioned it just a bit before as well. It doesn't matter what you're going through. doesn't matter who. How many times you fall down? I mean, how many times you make mistakes? Just keep your head on. No one can tell how many times you've fallen. As long as you keep your head on and keep pushing, everyone thinks you won. So that's my only advice and the best advice I could give you, honestly. Yeah. I love that. Thank I you. love that. Thank you. Thank well, you. Uh, and uh, well, we've got the Bright Tank Lagers, the yes, East Perth sir. Lager. Uh, voted best lager in the country by the uh, Brewers. 100%. What a fucking flex. I know, right? And there's a I hear there's another lager coming out soon by Bright Tank. I'm excited. Double double chalk faces. Oh, oh, oh. No, oh. No, no, no. So it's something I don't know. Damn. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm excited about that. That's going to oh. be I know, right? Yeah, Bright Tank Family Building. So shout outs to them. Um Big and time. then uh, shout time. outs to my boy Tyler. Jargon with an asterisk. Let's go. Fresh shirt. The fucking quality of these shirts, man. Yeah, like, that's that's clean. That's actually clean. Like I've I've just noticed recently, like different shirts that I've I've like, been given or been purchased, like uh, everything that Cab put pulls out. Yeah, yeah. Like, Quality's is good. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. Um, but like Tyler's specifically, his brand, um, Jukuhara. Fucking hell. He's gone under the wing with cabinet and stuff at the moment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, sick. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, I've yeah, seen him quite but, a bit. Um, there. shout outs to this thread. Good yeah. times. Um, and uh, for anybody listening, uh, check out Baby Blue on all uh, platforms. Uh, description to his Instagram. And then yep. from there, his link in bio will take you everywhere. That's cool. Um, pre-save this. We're going to um, fast forward this podcast. We'll release it right now. So if you're hearing us, this will probably be on the same day. Yeah. Good luck to my producer. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you can actually interact in the comments of the YouTube uh episode ask um baby blue a question let's go or in spotify you can actually ask a question in this uh episode as well Mm -hmm. uh other than that 
All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, my man. Looking this forward has to been amazing. Uh, thank you for including me in your music video. No, of course, of course, my guy. always, always, Shit. my guy. All right, and uh, and uh, special guest uh, in the background with Rack. Big um, dog. Yeah, um, big pimp. I, I call him big pimp now. <laughs> big pimp, yeah, yeah, yeah. big pimp. Because he's <laughs> he he's both of our managers. <laughs> He's both of our managers. Um, so yeah. shout out to Rack. Um, yeah. uh, now a second time, a two time mm. appearance on the podcast. Let's with his go voice. down. Um, but yeah, as always. Oh, there he is there. You're going to have to. <laughs> as, as, uh, as always, guys, good thanks. <laughs>